What's cracking people, I'm Theo Kane, this is Slimehouse TV, and in today's video, I kinda wanna do something that is a continuation of the last episode of Retro Reimagined that I dropped. So in that video, I created a retro 80s slash 90s style action figure of an old hammer space marine. Just cause I were compelled to do it, just for myself, just as a little experiment to see what it'd look like. And although I know a lot of my regular viewers would enjoy it, cause they're all like retro toy collectors and toy art enthusiasts and that kind of thing, I didn't expect it to be so popular amongst the Warhammer crowd. I had so many new eyes on my channel, so many people checking out that video and checking out the back catalogue, including some real big hitters in the Warhammer community as well, which was awesome. All stuff that I didn't expect and also so many people in the comments saying that they wanted to see more. So what I thought I'd do in today's video is get out a bunch of my old Hammer collection, because like I said in that video, I've got quite a lot of it. Have a sift through it, pick out some characters that look cool, check out some of the old sculpts, and also look for some future potential candidates that we could give the retro action figure treatment. So if you think that sounds fun, if you think that sounds like a bit of you, then as always, sit back make sure you're comfy and get yourself strapped in for our brand new episode of Slimehouse TV. Let's do this. a retro toy guy most of my life. Anybody that doesn't know, my dad was a big retro toy dealer. I grew up with my dad like following him around market stalls and car boats and stuff so it's kind of in the blood. Always been more of a toy collector but then I also have been a bit of a toy dealer from time to time as well and on my travels of going round and buying stuff for my collection and then buying stuff to like buy and sell and stuff, I've come across lots of Warhammer. So everything that I've got in this collection here is not stuff that I've like gone out of my way to find or anything like that. It's stuff that I've just stumbled across. Other stuff is things that I've found at car boats. There's a little bit that was from my collection as a kid. I've also had a lot of this stuff donated from being a toy guy on the channel and somebody that's interested in Warhammer. So there's a real mix here of stuff that I've painted, stuff that my friends have painted, some stuff that's unpainted and then some stuff that's like been professionally painted by people that are a thousand times better than me because I'm like no professional painter or anything like that. So yeah, a real mix and this isn't even all of the stuff that I've got. This is just some stuff that I had to hand. Anyway, I got a bunch of it out and uh, I pulled out a few things that I thought would be interesting topics, some stuff that was like discussed in the comments on that video and things, and I just thought it'd be cool to have a look at it and decide if there's any that's got like potential to be turned into a future retro action figure here at Slimehouse TV. So right off the top, if we talk about Space Marines first of all, obviously that's what I made in that first video. Space Marines are very popular and there were lots of people saying, oh, would you do one of this chapter? Would you do one of that chapter and that kind of thing? Now, that body that I've got, I can do anything I want with it. I can change it up, I can move it around. I can change the battle damage, I can change the iconography and the emblems on it and that kind of thing. So that's something that I will do either way, whether I put that in videos or over on my Instagram or whatever. But something that I would also like to do is explore some of the other armors from the old Hammer Space Marine lore. Now these are ones that I was looking at from the old Space Crusade game. I was looking at the old Space Crusade game up there. And although they do probably look to the naked eye or at a quick glance like a standard Space Marine, they're actually pretty different. They've got leg armor like the old Beaky Marines and also the faces are quite different as well. So it would be nice to recreate one in this style. Do you know, so I've got like a, a little bit of variation so that I've got Old Hammer, I've got the Space Crusade, I've got the Beaky Marine, you know, just like a real nice archive of them. Also, when it comes to Space Marines as well, there's Terminators. Now, there's so many different Terminators if we're looking at Old Hammer. So we've got this type, which to me is like a classic Terminator. This is the Terminator that I remember seeing in White Dwarf when I was young, but there's some that's like even older than this and to some people are even more iconic. We've also got, if I'm going to floss some of the new Warhammer that I've got, like some more new stuff that's been professionally painted. I didn't paint these, my friend gave me these. This is like basically that same armour, but just jacked up on steroids, a lot better looking. And I'll get close-ups of all these so you can see them, but these are two really nice ones. But they are still basically that same Terminator armour, just like modernised and made to look better. There's one of these older ones here that I painted myself. I actually painted this in a video on the channel years ago as a Blood Angel. That's a nice example of what they look like from that era. But then I've also got these ones as well. These are from the old Space Hulk game. Another one that I painted in a blank one. These are actually really hard to paint if you try and do it because like the faces aren't formed properly and things. It's from like when you got a box with loads of them in a board game so they weren't the best sculpts in the world. But the design of them I always really like. Look quite different to those old Terminators but again very iconic. Got really like big sloped shoulder pads and would be really nice to sculpt in that style and turn into an action figure at some point. And so many people in the comments were like do a Terminator, do a Terminator. So I really want to do it. Now, if we're talking about Terminators and we're talking about Space Hulk figures, you can't talk about those Terminators without talking about the Gene Stealers as well. Now, this is one, again, that I painted in an old video and stuff, and I really do like this guy. I'm still pretty happy with the paint job. And to me, the Gene Stealer, this old-school purple and blue Gene Stealer, is one of the most iconic things in all of Warhammer, especially in the old Hammer days anyway. There's also, though, some other old Gene Stealers, like these old, real old Hammer metal ones. Now, this guy, looking at him, already looks like a Playmates figure. He's got this mad long face, he's got loads of little 
little details all over him. He's got chains and medallions hanging from his neck. He's also got these little guys that I don't know if they go with him. They're like little, almost like Nurgling Tyranids. I know back in the day when they were doing the Gene Stealer cult in like those old Hammer days, they had really weird designs for these guys. Big Cadillac cars, they were mad. They looked like old space pimps. So there's like some really weird lore that you can explore if you go back and look at like the old Gene Stealers and stuff and definitely things that would be really nice to incorporate into like a Playmate style figure. Also, if I was going to do a Gene Stealer, it would be so cool to take inspiration from the old Kenner Aliens line, another toy line that I really, really love and have got like a lot of affinity for and that kind of thing. And you could print them in green and blue translucent resins and stuff like the old Alien Queen and the Mantis Alien. So yeah, I'd definitely go down that route as well if I was to make a Gene Stealer, which as I just said, I've got to do now. There's also as well a couple of other types of Gene Stealer and also Terminators going back to what we were just saying that are really awesome that don't get talked about too much. I believe these are from the old Tyranids attack game. But first of all, we've got the Librarian Terminator, I think they're called. And I've only got one of these complete. I've got quite a few bodies, but the arms for them, I don't seem to have. But these Library Terminators, they've got like a ram skull on their shoulder. They've got a really unique face that's kind of different to the normal Terminator. They've got an axe in one hand and a gun in another, and they look really cool. And then there's also these Gene Stealer guys, which I think are another kind of Gene Stealer cult, but I don't know for sure. You let me know in the comments if you know, because I guarantee you lot know a lot more about this stuff than I do. But these hold guns and stuff, they have much more like humanoid arms and they look a lot more like a human than a tyranid but yeah would also be really nice to incorporate into the kind of toys that we're making at the minute Talking about games that came out around that time as well, we've also got Space Crusade. Now, this is a box that's full of stuff that we can take inspiration from. So not only has it got the Terminators in and the Gene Stealers and the Marines that I talked about earlier, it's also got Orcs in it. So we can start talking about Orcs and the possibilities of creating a retro toy of an Orc or multiple Orcs. And I honestly think that whether you get like an old school Orc or one from like the early 2000s, a Warhammer Orc always kind of looks like a Warhammer Orc. I think that like you can slice it in a few different ways and it's always going to look very cool. And I think I'd be less precious about trying to make a specific Orc from a specific era and just try and make a really cool Orc that feels old school. Also, these are a lot more squatted and like stood a bit straighter, whereas the Orc from like more of the early 2000s kind of era is a bit more hunched forward and things. So I think I prefer this Orc, even though normally I prefer the old school style. I think when it comes to Orcs, I prefer this kind of version. So this is probably what I'd go with. I do have another version of an Orc that I'd like to do, another idea, but I'll talk about that a bit later. We've also got Gretchens in here. I'm not really bothered about them. If I were going to do them, I'd probably just do it as a minifigure that comes with the Orc. The Playmates figures that I take a lot of inspiration from always used to come with a minifigure, so I try and incorporate a minifigure into my toys. I also thought it would be cool to have one of the little servo skulls or the little flying baby cherub angel things that Space Marines have flying around with them. I thought they would make cool minifigures as well for some Space Marines in the future. What's also interesting about this box, and I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head. It might tell us on the bottom or something, but these actually come with like these weird Necron things, like early versions of Necrons, almost look like Terminators, not like a Warhammer Terminator, like a Schwarzenegger Terminator, like a T-800 or a T-101. Like these guys, they look very similar, and these are like early 2000s Necrons, I love these when they come with the little piece of acrylic rod in the middle, and if I made one I would 100% use a piece of green acrylic rod because I love when they incorporate that into toys. But you could probably do like that style Necron, if that's what they are, with that acrylic rod in his gun and make something that's like a real nice happy balance of both of them, what do you reckon? There's also some really cool Chaos Marines inside this set as well, I've got some over here also. And uh, yeah, these to me are very iconic. I know I use that word a lot, iconic, but you can't deny that these old Chaos Marines are very, very cool. And uh, like when you think of like old school Chaos Marines, these are some that always pop into my mind personally. Now talking about Chaos Marines, that's like a whole different beast of their own and basically like in the world of Warhammer you've got the Imperium of Man, like the humans, the good guys, and then you've got other humans that have been contaminated and possessed by like one of four different giant demons, like really powerful forces that overtake them and they create Chaos Marines, like traitors, heretics as they call them, and there's like lots of different types that we could look at. But speaking about more like demon specific ones, ones that are specifically like infected and possessed by a specific demon, we've got these ones that are possessed by corn. I think these are all called corn berserkers. I think if they're a space marine and they've been possessed by the god of corn or like they're under the leadership of corn, then they're always corn berserkers. Correct me if I'm wrong. So these are like early 2000s ones. These are ones that I would have had when I was younger. These are the ones that I could have gone into the Warhammer shop and bought when I was like 16, 15 into these toys, into these wargaming miniatures, sorry. 
This is like a much older one. This is made of metal. He's really cool. He might have actually been from around the same time, but sometimes like the, the commanders and captains and stuff were uh, made of metal. So he might be one that's a little bit earlier, but I'm not sure. This guy is certainly old and he's painted really nice as well. Check that comb berserker. He doesn't have his backpack. I might have his backpack in one of these boxes, but I don't have it on him right now. There's also Nurgle and I don't have any of my Nurgle Death Guard and stuff, which is like rotting corpse, zombie intestines falling out, bloated pustules and all that kind of thing. I love me some Nurgle. I don't have any of my Nurgle Marine to hand i do have some newer ones though as a good example so they uh, yeah they're a good example of like what nurgle represents i've got some noise marines and i don't even think that they make noise marines anymore i had a look recently to see if they still do noise marines but these are all possessed by slanesh i believe Slanesh is like a god of hedonism and stuff who was created actually by the Eldar in the Warhammer world because they like get up to so much like salacious stuff and, and craziness that all that collectively combined created a god that represented it. That's what I think anyway, like correct me if I'm wrong, go to Jordan Sorcery or someone, his channel will tell you all this factual stuff like exactly how it is. But like I said, these are noise marines so they've got weapons that look a bit like a guitar, they've got like speakers coming out of their mouths, look kind of Cenobite actually, if you like Hellraiser Cenobite you'll probably like yourself some noise marines. He's a cool metal one with the guitar gun. Check that guy with like platform boots and a big Mohawk head. But what this means basically, like I was saying earlier, because I've got like that main book now that I've made of a space marine, I can change it, I can dock it, I can add things to it to make chaos marines as well. It takes a bit longer because there's a lot going on, but yeah, I can definitely do it. There's also some really cool characters in Warhammer as well, like specific generals and primarchs and leaders and captains and that kind of thing. And I've not really thought too much about doing them, but one that I would love to do is this guy. This is also a chaos guy. So this is Azrak the Annihilator. You get this if you subscribe to Warhammer Plus for a year. I never did that, my friend did, and he gave me this but he's a really cool character and he's actually based off an old white dwarf cover check this white dwarf issue 182 that's him there on the cover so this is a figure that was basically based on that so very very old hammer but you can also imagine how long that would take to sculpt look at everything that's going on there there's so much there's so much like little details going on with his armor now, if you watch my channel, you'll know that I love Playmates toys. I talk about them all the time, and uh, Playmates are like my favourite toy line of all time. And their characters and sculpts and figures that have got so many intricate details all over them, cuts and battle damage and stuff. When I sculpt my figures, I put battle damage all over them as a homage straight to Playmates toys. Now, when I did the Space Marines before, I kept them kind of basic and just gave them battle damage and stuff. But if I were doing, like, these Terminators with skulls and bones and chains and cloth all over them and, like, these standard bearer banners and stuff and different weapons and all that kind of thing, then I would definitely do that, like, high detail style. And again, if I were doing this guy, then that would take, like, a good few weeks to sculpt all this detail. I can do it, but it would take a lot longer. So it's not something that I'm looking to jump into straight away because I've got other things that I want to do. So when I was talking before about orcs and how I've got like a little idea in mind of something that I'd like to do, this is basically it. One second. So this here is my third edition Blood Bowl. There's a few different editions of Blood Bowl. The first ever edition was all cardboard. The second edition has a really cool polystyrene board, but all the figures are pretty boring and pretty standard. And then you've got this one, third edition Blood Bowl, which is my favourite. Although I do love the artwork on second edition Blood Bowl, so I am looking out for one. I do want one for my collection. It's not that, that's a bunch of monster in my pockets and pog slammers. That's not what we're looking for. <laughs> So I love Blood Bowl figures. I don't really play the game or anything like that. I, I've never really learned to play the Blood Bowl game, but I really love the figures from it. The humans or whatever, I'm not really bothered about them. They just look like kind of humans in night armor with like plumes coming out the top of their helmets. Not really my thing. But the orcs, they're fire. Check these. So these are basically American football orcs. Orcs from the 40k universe, kind of in like a what if world if they played football instead of went to war with each other. And these to me are really awesome. They're hunched over with like little like NFL armor and stuff, spiky helmets. They have the football in their hand. And then you've got metal ones that are a lot more detailed, spiky shoulder pads, big blades on their fists and things. Almost look like that Rutger Hauer movie, Salute of the Jugger. And I just think if you did an orc like that, like once I've made an orc, then I can put it in different armor. I can slightly change its face and change the scars that I put on its face and things and put it in different armor. But if I did one like that, American football style, I just think that would be an awesome figure to put on the shelf and you could have a lot of fun painting. In it. So, Blood Bowl is another option of something I would really like to do. Check that artwork. Absolute fire. I have as well in these boxes got a couple of really nice modern Blood Bowl teams that have been painted super professionally. I'll show you them another time though because that's not relevant to what we're doing right now. But I will show you them. If you like me showing off all this Warhammer and stuff, you like me showcasing it and talking about it, then let me know down in the comments below and we can definitely do some more of it. Because I love it.
There's also as well lots of cool demons in the world of Warhammer 40k and Fantasy. There's two different types of Warhammer to anybody that doesn't know. You've got 40k which is like the future Warhammer and then you've got Warhammer Fantasy but the demons you can kind of interchange and using both of them. You've got these which are the blood letters which are from Korn which I was talking about earlier. They're all about rage and blood and blood for the blood god and all that. I ain't got too many, but I do have some old hammer demons as well. But there's some really nice things like blue horrors, pink horrors, and all just things that would again make really cool toys. And once I've sculpted one, I can then kind of dock them and change them a little bit and do like multiples. Slightly different with slight variations, but all again using the same book. Then you've got these guys, Eldar or Eldari, I think they're sometimes called. And there's two different types of Eldar. So you've got Eldar, and then you've got Dark Eldar. And even though like one is supposed to be kind of good and one is supposed to be kind of bad, I think they're all pretty messed up. Very hedonistic and stuff. And like I said, they're the ones that did so much messed up stuff that all that collectively like gathered together manifested an actual demon to represent it. And I think the difference between them is, correct me if I'm wrong, you've got the Eldar which are like against the demon that they created and then you've got the Dark Eldar. They're a bit like, yeah, do you know what? We'll, we'll do that demon's bidding. We're not going to be like his minions. We're not going to roll with him in his army or anything like that. He very much has his own army. But I think that the Eldar do like more messed up stuff to keep him alive. Something like that probably isn't nothing to do with that. Like I said, go to Jordan Sorcery's channel if you want actual factual lore and actually listen to somebody that knows what they're on about. I'm just here to talk about which ones I think would make cool action figures. And these guys are basically elves, like elves and dark elves, but in space. And check how messed up this is. He's actually got like a couple of human slave girls on his ship, like Jabba the Hutt on his skiff. You would never get away with that in Warhammer now, ever. <laughs> And as a kid, I'll be honest, I never really liked Eldar. I thought they were kind of waste. I didn't really think they looked cool. But as an adult now, I appreciate the look of them. And I would definitely like to make one at some point with that long helmet and stuff. There's lots of different variation. You've got the Eldar. You've got the Harlequin Eldar that are also part of that army or part of that race or whatever. So lots of different variation. And if I'm going to do all this stuff eventually, I would like to get to an Eldar figure. So that's just the Warhammer 40,000 potential stuff. That's like future Warhammer. Warhammer in space with chainsaws and guns and that kind of thing. There's also Warhammer Fantasy or Warhammer Age of Sigma or Old World or whatever you want to call it. Back in the day, we used to call it Warhammer Fantasy. And that's orcs and elves and goblins and bretonians and all that kind of thing. And again, there's a whole pool of stuff that we can pull from. Different potential for different action figures. I'm a big fan of Beastmen from the old fantasy Warhammer. I really like Beastmen. I'm really into like bipedal warrior beasts and anthropomorphic characters and that kind of thing. And I just think these are awesome. But in these boxes, I've got so many different metal Beastmen and stuff like really old ones. In fact, some of the oldest Warhammer that I own is old Warhammer fantasy stuff. Talking again about the orcs as well, if I sculpt like just a generic orc, I can put a gun in its hand or I can put a spike bat and a knife or a shield in its hand and change its outfit up and then it's a Warhammer Fantasy orc. So if I create an orc, I've kind of got like a generic orc that I can use for Warhammer Fantasy, for Blood Bowl, for Warhammer 40k, whatever. An orc is an orc, like I said, and no matter what you put on them, they're always going to look like a Warhammer orc if you do it in that style. Got some on the sprue there, never taken off, look at them. Never off the sprue, old school. <laughs> Got some really nice old hammer goblins. I've got like a whole box of these. I reviewed the Jacosi case uh, a few months ago on my channel, on this channel. <laughs> but that's like a Warhammer carry case and I put a lot of my old goblins and orcs in there just to keep them safe because some of these are still painted beautifully after all these years. But if I were going to do like any little goblins or gretchens or squigs or snotlings or anything like that, I'd probably reserve them for minifigures. You might remember as well last year, if you've been watching my channel for that long, I got given to me some nice skeleton warriors and I cleaned them all up and painted them and put them in a nice little unit. Well, after that, I also got off my friend Andy from Andy's Toys and Models, a fellow toy guy. He got me a bunch of these skeletons, a bunch of undead, a bunch of skeleton warriors, all that I'll paint up at some point and put into my army because I'd really like to make like an old world undead army. I think that would be fire. But anyway, I digress. Like, I really like old undead Warhammer Fantasy. I think that would be really cool. And although it would obviously look just like a, a, a Ray Harryhausen skeleton, if you know me, you know that I'm a big Ray Harryhausen fan. I met Ray Harryhausen before he passed away. Rest in peace, Ray Harryhausen, my guy. I really love Ray Harryhausen stuff. So it would be really cool to create an old school action figure in that style very skeleton warriors but also very Harryhausen and also very Warhammer and have something that's like a nice amalgamation and a homage to all of that stuff that I love I was just looking at this old book as well this is like an old Citadel catalog from I don't even know what year it is it doesn't even say but really really old and we can tell that it's old because it's 40 pence for a figure fighting men 40 pence imagine Warhammer for 40 pence I could do a whole video just talking about this book but I hope that 
me in this video today has given you like a little bit of an idea of where my head's at with all this stuff at the minute. It's uh, it's really exciting for me. There's a lot of potential here. And honestly, when I created that Space Marine the other day, I didn't expect hardly anybody in the Warhammer community to like it. I'm a guy that makes like Ninja Turtle style toys and Safubi and Kaiju and that kind of thing. I'm just a big Warhammer fan and I wanted to like combine both those loves. And uh, the fact that people really liked it and it connected with so many people in the Warhammer scene, like I was really grateful for that and I'm so happy that you liked it. Honestly, I thought I were going to get roasted in that video. Like, I thought people were going to be commenting, like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. This is sacrilege to Warhammer. And other than the odd person, because you're always going to get the odd knobhead, most people were so sound and so cool about it. And, uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of big hitters in the Warhammer community got in touch and said they liked it and stuff, which was really, really awesome, because I've been a fan of a lot of them people for a long time. Now, obviously, this is all just me spitballing. I'm talking about in theory about all this stuff. I've got lots of things that I want to do in lots of different genres, not just Warhammer. My head's always spinning with ideas. I'm into movies, comics, old animation, Japanese stuff. I've got so many ideas of things that I'd like to turn into retro toys. But I will definitely get to some of these at some point. And if you lot like them, even half as much as you like that last video, then it definitely gives me the impetus to get on with some of this stuff. For now, I think I'm just going to concentrate on doing a few more Space Marines. I've been playing around on Procreate with different colour schemes. I'd love to do like a Dark Angel or a Salamander, an Imperial Fist, a White Scar. Like all these different factions that come in really cool colour schemes. And uh, yeah, just do a few to see how they look. A few people commented as well that the Bolter that I'd sculpted for that Space Marine was wrong and it was a much newer Bolter and I should have done an old one. And I'll be honest, if you watch that video, it was like 3am when I was sculpting that thing. I weren't even like thinking what I was sculpting. I just got a picture off Google and replicated it. So... I will go back and make him an old school bolter for all those people that were concerned, like we will get that sorted. <laughs> But it would also be nice to create some new weapons for these other Space Marines as well. I like that thing that a lot of the Space Marines hold that's like some kind of communication device. It looks like a Ghostbusters PK meter that they hold in the hand. It looks like some kind of scanner device. I could do that. There's also like war hammers and different weapons and combat knives. I don't know who can have a sword. I don't know if it's just captains or if like any regular Space Marine can hold them. You let me know in the comments below what would be some other cool like melee weapons that I can give to these guys. Because yeah, I don't want to just give them all chainswords. But I just want to say a massive thank you again to everybody that watched that video, everybody that like left a nice comment on it, everybody that like gave me so much praise on those toys, because like I said, I didn't really think that many people were going to like them in the Warhammer world. I thought it was going to be a lot more for the retro toy collectors and stuff. But the fact that you liked it, I thought was awesome, and it's really given me the boost to do some more. So if you've got any thoughts about anything that we talked about in today's video, if there's any factions that you think I didn't mention that I should have mentioned that would make cool toys, again, please let me know down in the comments. Also let me know if you've enjoyed seeing me go through these boxes of Old Hammer and Warhammer today because like I said there's so much more where this came from and one thing that this has reminded me is how much I need to organise all this stuff because at the minute it's all looked after, it's all put nice in these boxes but they're in no order, like stuff's all over, it's like a Warhammer pick and mix right now. So I need to put all of my marines together, all of my chaplains, all my chaos, all my orcs, all my tyranids, everything, my assassins, get them all sorted out and get them into like separate categories and stuff because at the minute they're just all over the place. So yeah, that's something that I definitely need to do in the future and I might even make a video about it. <laughs> if this is your first time checking out the channel, I'd love to know how you found me, where you're from, what you collect. Welcome to Slimehouse TV, you're very welcome here, we've got a very good community. I've also got a Patreon that helps support everything that I'm doing here at the channel. And what I'm going to try and do is at some point get the STL for this Marine on the Patreon. I don't know how to do it, so I'm not going to do it yet. I know that there's going to be some like legal hoops that you've got to jump through. I think if you're giving it away on your Patreon, it's okay. So that's something that like I'll have a look into and see if I can do because I'll be honest I'm not super precious about that STL that I made of that Space Marine that's not something that like I don't want anyone else to have I would love other people to be able to enjoy it so many people hit me up like can I buy that I want one where can I find this I need one of these in my life and I know what it's like when you're a collector and you really want something in your collection and you can't get it like you want to try and get that so I would like to be able to put that up on my Patreon so that if you join the Patreon you can get that STL for free and I think it's fine but before I like know for sure I want to look into it and find out for definite but if I can do that, then I'll let you all know. And anytime I sculpt a new helmet or a new shoulder pauldron or anything like that, I'll put them all on the Patreon so that there's always regular things dropping on there so that you can keep getting them and keep adding to your army as I make stuff. But like I said at the minute, that's just all what if. That's not something that I'm saying for definite. I've got to work out the best way to do it. As I said, I just did that as a little experiment for myself. They're not for sale or anything like that. I just did them for me to see if I could. But the fact that so many people like it really makes me like want to be able to get it out there to people. 
I also need to remind you as well that this is not like a Warhammer exclusive channel or anything like that. I cover lots of stuff on here. Very much like retro theme, toy making, toy collecting and that kind of thing. And the next video that I'm going to be doing is very different to this one. It's about toy making, but it's not Warhammer. It is game themed though, so you might like it. And uh, it's like a really big IP for me to be working on officially. It's like a really big IP, so I can't wait to get into it. And that's going to be the next episode, so I hope you're looking forward to that. So I think that's enough talking from me today, being a very like unscripted video today, very ad libby and things, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Theo Kane, this is Slimehouse TV, and again I just want to say a massive thank you for all the stuff that you can be watching on YouTube, all the other Warhammer content, all the other toy content, the fact that you come back here every single week and watch my channel really does mean a lot to me, and I hope to catch you in the next video. But until then, I'm Theo Kane, this is Slimehouse TV, and I'm gone. Pow!